remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there, shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The second scripture is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verses 5 through 19. And as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with noble stones and offerings, he said, As for these things which you see, the days will come when there shall not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. And they asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign when this is about to take place? And he said, Take heed that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them. And when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified. For this must first take place, but the end will not be at once. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes and in various places famines and pestilences, and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. But before all this, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors for my name's sake. This will be a time for you to bear testimony. Settle it, therefore, in your minds not to meditate beforehand how to answer, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which none of your adversaries will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be delivered up even by parents and brothers and kinsmen and friends, and some of you they will put to death. You will be hated by all for my name's sake but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your lives. This is the word of the Lord.
introduction to this tune, if you've ever thought, gosh, I wish I could sing with the choir today. <laughs> this is an audience participation sing-along. We're counting on you. Don't worry, it's not an audition for the choir. <laughs> Although, uh, here's how the tune goes. We're going to sing it for you. It's in your, I think you have a copy of it. And, uh, and then you're gonna, we're going to sing it together once. And then we're going to start the anthem. And then... Bruce will, you'll know when it's give, time to sing. Give you the signal. <laughs> yeah. He'll we'll summon you. All right, so, choir, here we go. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my Savior. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense. And he will be my Savior. And if you just want to speak the word very emphatically, that's good. <laughs> Alright. We're going to do that four times, right? Four times. Watch for me. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, Jimmy, now I can say I've, I sang with a choir. Yes, sir. But jokes aside, that anthem was a great interpretation of the text. Amazingly done, thank you. Didn't know you were a theolo theologian on top of everything else. It must have been a beautiful day. Everybody's sitting outside, looking at the temple, and they were talking about how beautiful it was. The splendor. It is not just admiring the architecture and everything else that went with it. There was more to that moment. I forget who it was. One of my professors, I suppose, said a contemporary interpretation of that moment was, would be something like this, would be like one of those Garrison Keeler's Story time, that lakeside community where the women are strong and brilliant, men are pretty, children eat their vegetables and ask for more. That kind of a story time because what they were saying was not just all about factual stuff. What they were talking about, the temple was filled with nostalgia, was filled with the kind of hyperbole and storytelling. Even Jesus being in that midst has something to say about that temple. I am sure his mother and his father said, you know what? We brought you to the temple <clears throat> like every good kosher Jew should do. We brought you here to be dedicated. And then we finished the dedication on our way home. We found out that you're lost. We came back and you were sitting in the temple and lecturing to the scribes and the Pharisees and all the rabbis. That was Jesus' memory of the temple. 
everybody had their own memory of that sacred space. You know, the temple in Jerusalem has significant faith stories and memories attached to it. You know, the psalmist says that, Oh, Jerusalem, if I forget thee, let my right hand forget its deed. Let my tongue cling to its upper jaw. Let everything about me just go to smithereens. Why? Because I cannot forget you, O Jerusalem. You are at the core of my being and my existence. You are my longing. Every Jew scattered in the diaspora would say, next year in Jerusalem, that is that temple. Children being baptized, marriages, funerals. I, I don't think they had many sermon times, otherwise they would have had nap memories too. All of that. And they are sitting outside and they are admiring everything about this temple. And what does Jesus do? Jesus says, well, not one stone would be left upon the other. Everything will be destroyed. I will bring it down to the ground. You You've been there. Haven't you been there? You are talking about what a beautiful day it is. And someone says, yeah, and we're going to pay for it. Because before long, it's going to turn nasty on us. Hmm? Or you're talking about some beautiful something. And somebody says, but you know, if you laugh too much, you're going to cry later. It's, 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 that's in our life, in our memory. We have been through that experience, but that is not what is happening in this text. See, they, when somebody does that to me, I just roll my eyes and just say, I'm not going to let you ruin my moment. And I just keep on going. And you should too. Don't be polite. Don't, don't say, I need to add to this misery story. Just ignore it. Because what happens is it takes on a life of its own. A beautiful moment. Somebody ruins it for you. The next thing you know is the next person you meet, you will ruin their beautiful moment. That's how life goes. It just goes on. It, it takes on a life of its own. In this story, when Jesus says that, the disciples could have just rolled their eyes and said, there he goes again, and just gone on their way. But no. What happens immediately? The disciples look at Jesus and say, tell us when this is going to happen. Give us the time. You see, you want to take that with a little bit of contemporary interpretation too. End times is a billion dollar business. Predictions, it creates cultic following. It pretty much dominates some people's very existence. They just live by that, looking for destruction everywhere. And everything is a sign of the destruction. I have heard about signs and signs of the destruction that anymore when somebody says, that is the sign of destruction, end times, it's coming. I'm saying, okay, good, because tomorrow is going to be a beautiful day. But when the disciples ask, when, tell us what? You know why they are so particular about it? Because the Babylonian invasion had destroyed the temple multiple times and they know what that destruction means they know how it 
devastates the community. Not only that, they know that kind of destruction, how it devastates memory. You see, one of the most beautiful things for people of faith is to cherish and protect our faith memories. We need to have a memory bank of our faith. God of the past, God of the ages, the one who delivered us in the past, in our personal lives, in our family life, in our community life, in the world, the God who has been there because that memory is what gets us through a crisis of the present. And Jesus, when he says that, the disciples ask, tell us when this is going to happen. And Jesus goes on to say, the temple would be destroyed, but don't believe those who say this is the end time. Don't believe those who say it is all over now. Don't believe those who will talk about God's vengeance and anger because God is not the God of vengeance and anger. God does not come around the corner to spook you. It is not about end times. Don't believe in it, but that is your time to testify, to witness. That is the time for you to raise up above the story of destruction and talk and witness about hope. That is the time, church, for us to talk about God's redeeming grace. You see, the disciples understood that. That's why they were asking Jesus that question. Tell us about it because every time of crisis is a time for the faith community, for people of faith to say, God won't let it happen. In your own personal life, in my personal life, in our collective life, we need to keep telling ourselves that. When we think that all of our energy has been sapped, we feel like the kind of challenges that come our way, it is beyond our control. There is nothing I can do about it because the doctors have said so, the banker has said so, the builder has said so. It is over. Say, there is one more powerful than all of these people who is in charge and who is in control, the one in whom I trust, the mighty fortress. It is time to testify. You need to experience that joy in your own life before you testify. We, in our collective memory, need to retell that story. Hundred and some years of Madison Avenue Christian Church. We need to be able to tell the story to each other that every time there has been a challenge, we have come out more, we have come out stronger than before. And if that is so in the past, it is so today, and we'll tell our children that about the future. One of the things I discovered about Christian Church Disciples of Christ in trying to trace our history is every time there was a crisis, every time, the church found a way to rise up stronger than before. One good example was right here in Cincinnati <clears throat> during the assembly that the church after the depression did not think that they can make it. And the women's missionary society said now is the time we need to pray and get missionaries ready to go to of all the places China. We sent missionaries to China, to Africa. And you know what? The result is, by 2030, there will be more disciples in Africa than USA and Canada put together. 
Every time there has been a time when things have been tough, the church found a way to rise up. <clears throat> There's a little disciple congregation in Los Angeles. And what that church did was, when everybody said, it is all over. All inner city life will come to an end. It's time for you folks to shut your doors and run to suburbia. Have you heard that story before? Because that happened here too. It's time for you to run to suburbia. And the CWF of that church said, uh -uh, we're going to do something different. What they started doing was, in the evenings, they would go and clean up the neighborhood and plant gardens and continue to make things prettier and deal with those who are having issues with substance abuse. And they kept on doing it. And what they did was they reclaimed that neighborhood and would not leave it in, at the mercy of the drug lords and all those who were devastating lives because it is possible for faith communities to do that and their voices to tower over and above all the destruction that happens around. This week, Kathleen Parker had a good article. And the article is about all these paintings that she saw. It was paintings of women. And each painting was telling a story. There was one particular painting, she says, that caught her imagination. It was this woman who wore beautiful jewelry and she had this peace sign, but in that face you could see there is a story. And Kathleen Parker looked at the artist and said, tell me about this woman. And the owner of the Love Lady Center said, all these paintings are stories of women who have been at the Love Lady Center. They have all been subject to either substance abuse or abuse by their boyfriends, husbands, whatever. I shouldn't say whatever, that is a real story. By so many forces, people's lives that have been devastated. And Love Lady Center is the place where we take them in. They have to spend a year. And all kinds of work happens there to bring their lives back together. And pretty much all of them, pretty much all of them, have reclaimed their life again. They have gone back into the world as people who can participate in creative, powerful ways. To which Captain Parker said, I would like to meet that lady. He said, well, that is a tragedy. We caught her a little late. By then, her liver was all eaten up. She didn't make it, but she did get to live a later. But I'll tell you, Another story of my friend, Miss Smith. She said Miss Smith was so drunk. On top of that, she had taken all kinds of drugs and she was just wandering down the cornfields and the streets. I did not know what to do. And at a distance, she hears this beautiful singing. And she walks towards the singing and finds that it's a church. She goes into the church and she stays through the worship. And the worship is over. Everybody leaves. She's still sitting at the pew. She hears this voice and every church, folks, I've been in churches, every church has people who do things like this, including our own. 
She hears this voice and there is this elderly woman who walks up to her and says, Honey, I think you need help. Can I help you? And Ms. Smith said, yeah. And she was taken to this love lady center. It is not only that her life was turned around, but she became the messenger for this center. And Kathleen Parker, who writes that story, in the end says, what I learned is God's ways are mysterious and marvelous. You see, at times when we think that all is gone, at times when we hear about division and destruction, when people of faith would not listen to those voices but look into their voice of faith about the God who is within them speaking. Marvelous things happen. That is what Jesus is saying. When you hear things about destruction, it is time for you to witness. And you ask, what do I say? And Jesus says, I will give you the words. I will give you the words. I will show you the way. I will grant you the strength. Isn't that the story of faith? Isn't that our story? To God be God, honor, power, glory, and majesty, now and forevermore. Amen. seated. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, on this day we celebrate our stewardship campaign. We thank you that with your guidance, Madison Avenue Christian Church has provided love and support to those in need throughout the year. We pray that we may always be a place where your presence is made known through our actions. We ask that as we bring our gifts of time, talent, and treasure, you will bless and use them to further your mission here on the earth. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Please be seated. We're about to partake in the elements that represent the broken body of Christ and the cup that we share. Tough times. It comes to us sometimes expected, sometimes unexpected. Sometimes it seems larger than what it really is. And when that happens, fear paralyzes us and we don't know how to act, how to respond, because for a moment we think that something more powerful than what we have ever encountered is about to consume us. And about that moment, here again what Jesus says, the only way you can silence the voices that cause you to tremble the only way you can get out of the moment that has paralyzed you, the thoughts that paralyze you, the things that make you wonder, the only way you can do it is listen to the voice. Jesus says, I will speak to you at that very moment. I will grant you the wisdom I will remind you of the strength that is already in you, that I have placed in you, that is there. I will reveal things that are hidden. For all of that to happen, for us not to give in to times that are challenging, we need to get into that habit of silencing all of that and listening to that still voice that tells you, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for through fiery trials your pathway would lead the rivers of woe, they will not overflow. And you would be able to say, it is well with my soul. The gifts of God for the people of God.
All are welcome to the Lord's table. Let us give thanksgiving for it. O oh Lord, our God, the living God through all the ages, you are a loving God who continually makes things new. You challenge us to new life, new hope, new works. We are grateful for this table where we come to remember that Christ gave his all for us. The symbols of the bread and cup sustains us spiritually. Your presence here is at work in us and through us, giving us opportunities to intentionally love you, love others, and make disciples of us to be loving members of your community. Before we even ask, before we even speak, you hear us. Thank you for challenging and blessing your children, which gives us opportunities to testify of your great works to others. Now, as we take this bread and cup, let us carry Jesus with us into the world and share his love with us all. In the name of Jesus, our living Lord, amen. the words of institution from Mark. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Let us drink together. This is a time in our service where we invite anyone that has been visiting or chooses to join with this congregation to come forward during the singing of our last hymn. If you are a woman, we need you to come and help us solve problems. If you're a man, we need you to come and listen. <laughs> Thank you. 
We need all of you. So if you would please come forward, we would more than op open arms, with open arms, greet you. Or if you would prefer, you can speak with Simon or an elder at a later date. Let us sing. Now go in peace, you saints of the Lord. God will grant you the wisdom and the strength to rise up above all challenges that you would face. Go be the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen.